again. So this is what we are referring to, preparing for the what is in life. This came to us as we did some brainstorming with our wonderful civic engagement team. And if you haven't heard about civic engagement team, that's really too bad. Um, they are a wonderful group of volunteers who come together. We do a lot of brainstorming. Uh, to find out what can we offer to not only the senior center, but members of the community that might be of interest. So some of the projects that they've already worked on and are quite successful, one of the first ones was our durable medical loaner equipment closet, um, which is a wonderful, wonderful resource for us to have here in Granby. It's all volunteers with our um, civic engagement team. It's located at Holcomb Farm. We take in... Um, durable medical equipment that somebody may no longer be using. We have wheelchairs, walkers, canes, commodes, tub seats, um, any number of items. Uh, and they're all there free. They all are sanitized and clean, so if somebody is in need of such an item, it's available to them. So that's one of their projects. Another one of their fabulous projects is our education team. They run our Lunch for the Mind program. We happen to be having a session uh, this Wednesday. And it is on Walker. No, Walker. Thank you very much. We have one of our lead team members here today, Eileen. Thank you. So it's Norman Rockwell. We have a speaker on Norman Rockwell, which will be followed up with a trip um, up to the museum sometime in November. So you can watch out for that. And then one of this is another um, item that came out of, of that brainstorming session. To see if we can uh, offer something to our community. So. If you want any more information on Civic Engagement Team, you can see me later. I do have several members here who would be love to talk to you, I'm sure, as well. So, maybe we should start. I'm ready. So here we are. This is just our introduction and an overview. So um, we're just going to present to you, we have this series that we've come up with. There will be three different speakers on three dates coming up for you. And we're just going to give you an overview on some of the topics and the discussions that we're looking to have. Uh, so Marissa DeLuca is our program assistant. She's been with us for about a year now. So uh, really bringing some fresh ideas to the Senior Center. So we're really happy to have Marissa. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And this is Sandra, Sandy Yost. Um, she's the Director of Human Services, and she's been here with the Senior Center for 15 years. Um, so a long time in the community, mm -hmm. and knows it very well. Oh, that's so, so really, what we're talking about is trying to prepare for those what ifs that might happen down the road. So um, the other thing, sorry, I forgot to ask. Um, we are interested in one thing um, that you're looking to find out in, during these se this series um, that comes to your mind that you're hoping to take home with you. So what is your expectation? expectation. When you came here today, what are you thinking that we're going to talk about that you might be able to take away? Well, I'm interested to know what services are available if we're going to be staying in our own home and maybe can't drive anymore and, you know, exactly. how do we get around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yep. How to keep your house if you're behind in your mortgage. Okay. Mm -hmm. Under services available, um, what is available for people to come to the house to help? Is it worth it to move to to, to move to a different place, or is it is it less less expensive to stay home or to move? Which is affordable? Mm -hmm. Well, we may not cover everything in one session, probably, but, but I have one question, too. I mean, meaning, with everything that's going on in the world, let's say something horrific, uh, horrific happens, 
What do we do? Do we have a center that we all go to? Or do we have any kind of point so that we can all gather and see what we can do later on? Mm -hmm. Because we don't have public transportation here. We can't have somewhere. And not always somebody has gasoline in their car. So we have to be ready as a town with children and elderly people and some kind of safety measure. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's any plans for more elderly housing in town? We're not going to talk about any <laughs> Not only <laughs> going over some, if not all, of these things, all right? But what I'm really pleased about is there has been some thought given. And that's what this whole series is about, is to start those conversations so that when something comes up, if something comes up, you'll have a sense of, okay, this is the direction that I need to head, rather than all of a sudden <coughs> you're in an acute situation and you have to deal with something immediately and don't know where to turn. So this really is it's a huge gift to you and also to your family. Um, knowing that my parents have decided to live in a um, certain community and have those resources available to them, that's a big relief. It's a relief to know that they've been working on all of those planning documents. You know, this is where the will is. This is the living will. This is the trust. This is the that. The notebook's here. This is what we have. And should anything happen, it's the roadmap. Here you go. This is where you find it. Um, so those are some of the things that we're hoping um, to kind of at least get you started on. Okay? Go right in. So here we go. Let's plan. <laughs> I don't know. When you start talking about, all right, let's think about what lies ahead. Some of it might be fantastic. You know, if your dream when you started working was to retire and you're going to end up on some lush tropical island with your feet up in a hammock, you know, with a beautiful cocktail and a pineapple, maybe that's a great thing. So that's fun to think about. But those other things that might happen, mm, sometimes your health starts to get um, deteriorate a little bit. Maybe the mind starts to go. I don't like to think about that stuff either, but I think... It uh, helps everyone if we do. So the first thing um, that we're going to talk about is your home, where you currently are today living in your home. Um, and what are the possible barriers in your home should your mobility or your ability change? Um, for instance, is your bedroom on the second floor? Do you have to go upstairs, God forbid if you broke your leg or had a stroke? Um, is everything livable on the first floor? So basically, you're gonna to wanna to evaluate, you're healthy now, but evaluate your home and your environment today. And then moving out a little further, what's available here in your town, right here in Granby? What's available for us as we start to get a little bit older? We have a fabulous senior center, of course. Um, hopefully that will help keep you a little bit engaged and active. Um, but here in town, we do have a, a nursing home in town. We have Meadowbrook of Granby. We do have some rehabilitation services. So if you do break that leg and you need assistance getting back on your feet, we, there are some services here for that. We are fortunate there are some doctor's offices, dentists, eye doctor, right here in our community. Uh, but if you need to get to a specialist, sometimes you might have to go a little further afield for that. And how are you going to get there? Right? You know, as we mentioned, we don't really have a huge uh, public transportation system here in Granby, but there might be some options. We do have some transportation options. Um, and again, look to your senior center. <laughs> And then we talk about the state. We live in Connecticut. It's one of the highest um, places to live for taxes. Um, so once we come to retirement, um, 
we have to look at financially. Can we afford it? Um, can we afford to stay in our own home? Um, and also you want to also take in consideration is your family around? So if something does happen and they, they can be your support system. And a lot of us um, here in, the, in this small town is basically what we're talking about, have been here their whole lives. Um, so you want to you want to make sure that that everything around you will you know grow with you as you age in place. And then just if you're going to look beyond that, you know, if you're one of those people who is fortunate enough to have a home both here in Granby, and then maybe you go somewhere else for part of the year. Some of the things you might want to consider um, with that as you get a little bit older, traveling. Can I still travel? Uh, how about my doctors? Should something happen in that other location? Do I have my doctors there? Do the doctors there communicate with the doctors here? Making sure that you have records and all of those things available to you at your fingertips. Some of those documents that you should have at your fingertips, whether it be your financial documents, um, your will, your power of attorney, the doctors, um, all of your bills, you should have all of that information in a, in a location that's easily accessible should something happen to you, whether it be your spouse or your kids or somebody you've appointed, should know how to get access to that information so they can continue to finance your care if that's what it comes to. But make sure you have those documents available to you if you're traveling. If, you, if you're in one place and something happens to you in the other place, know how to access those too. So we're going to go over some of the things that we're going to consider. Um, and really what we're talking about today, and I will say this again, Marissa and I, although that we do have quite a combined um, combination of, combined combination, that's a good start, right? <laughs> <laughs> of experiencing in the aging field, we are not experts in every single thing. So we were going to put out a disclaimer for you that if you're going to ask us a question, if we don't have that answer for you, we're hoping that we can at least point you in the right direction to either the appropriate agency or expert. So that's one of our little disclaimers. We will do what we can, definitely, to get an answer to that question. It might not be one that comes immediately from us, but we'll find the answer for you. So we're going to go over some of the considerations. So um, the first consideration would be level of care. So if something does happen to you, who, who in your community right now, in your circle, will be able to help you um, either get to doctor's appointments, um, help you um, if you can't drive, um, I just bring you to doctor's appointments, um, and also friends, maybe they can help you with meal time, um, if somebody could go grocery shopping for you. Um, so things that you really want to consider if you cannot get around for your everyday living necessities that you'll need. And that's me. I just want somebody to take care of me so that I can stop worrying all the time. Right? Isn't that all we want? Is somebody just to be there and help take care of us? So the next one we're going to talk about is finances. Nobody wants to talk about finances, but it's one of those biggest ones. What's it going to cost? And somebody talked about, okay, what if, uh, do I need to move? Should I move? I don't know. You're going to have to think about that for yourself. But can, that's a big consideration. If I'm going to move, am I moving because I'm downsizing? All right, and if I have a home now and I sell that home, the proceeds from that, am I going to be able to afford all the other things that I'm going to need? It's not just about the housing piece of it. If you're going to be combining that with having to look for a different level of care, how much does that cost? You don't want to know. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> well, you need to know. Um, do you have long-term care insurance? If you don't, oh, is it too late to get it? Is it too expensive for me at this point? Um, and then what's that impact going to be on that your retirement assets? You know, is it time to start spending down on some of those things so you can continue to have access? What are the ways that you can take some of those 
assets that you have and get them dispersed in certain places so that they are protected and you still have access to them later on. Don't have those answers over in the next session. Happiness and comfort. Um, we all want to be happy and we all get further in life if we're happy. And also, um, it's easier to understand ourselves and where we're going if we know what we want and what makes us happy. Um, and also for your family, too, as well, um, if something were to happen, that, that they know that you're happy. Um, I know if my parents ever, if anything ever happened to them, I would want to make sure that I know their wishes and what they would like and where they want to be. Um, and as long as they're happy, then my life can go on. Um, and that's, a, that's, that's where it all starts. As long as you're happy, you can do anything. So looking at some of the caregiving, that's the other thing, uh, brought up home care. You know, what if I'm going to need somebody to help me in my home? Well, that's one of the options. There's a few different options, and I'm happy to say some of them are available right here in Granby. We do have an active adult living center with Hunt Glenn. Um, that way you know if you're there, you're living in a place, um, maybe with your peers, 55 and over, there's not going to be a lot of kids running around with lots of toys that you might accidentally go over if you're not looking. Um, so that's a nice thing. Uh, independent living. Here in Granby we have two uh, independent living places. One is Stony Hill Village and the other one is Salmon Brook Housing. Both of those are um, subsidized housing, so that's really more for a lower income option. What um, is, what is Stony Hill Village and what? Stony Hill Village. Stony Hill, yeah. And then Salmon Brook Housing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know somebody up there. Yeah. I know somebody. There's waiting lists, aren't there? Yeah. Typically there are waiting lists, so that's something, again, if you're starting to think about this now and looking at what your finances are, and you know that that is probably one of the better options for you, knowing that in advance, before you really need to be there, start checking them out and find out what those waiting lists are so that you're not having to wait. Um, and be in a difficult situation. There's continuing care options. Those are what we like to call almost like a Cadillac <coughs> care, where you go to somewhere like Seabury, the American Inn, McLean. They have different levels of care right on the same campus. You can live independently in maybe your own condo, and then if your situation changes, there are options for you to move to a different level of care right there on the same campus all the way up to and including if you need nursing, long-term nursing um, care. Uh, so th that's another option. Um, and then the home care. We will have tools available for you um, on how to interview a caregiver or how to interview a home care agency. You really need to make that personal connection with the person who's coming in to care for you. Sometimes you might go through two or three people before you click, and that's okay. And it's your right to have somebody that you're comfortable with. There's no reason why you can't fire someone that you're just not working well with. Uh, so we will have some of those tools on how to interview. So I have a question. Do we have like a grand residence? Is any of these services give any kind of privileges to people who live in grand? Do we have any kind of, um, uh, how to say that? Uh, entitlement, so to speak, for ah. uh, reduced uh, living, whatever, so we can go somewhere else to look for. Uh, so, are uh, you asking if there's a priority given to Granby residents? Right. I would like, have to say, to like it, to mm -hmm. adapt, uh, others, you know, independently. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. No. I do not believe that you get preferential treatment just because you're already a current resident of a certain town. Yeah. Um, I believe. Money well, we talks. Don't have anything it's great. whatever, yeah. you know, if, if, if you can come in and afford to pay for something, you're in. They're yes. not going to say, okay, well, because you've lived so long in the community, you get type priority. Um, or you have less. Uh, right. Know, I, don't, I don't believe that's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the other consideration as well is your neighborhood, um, your surroundings. Um, 
how close um, is the pharmacy, places to eat, the grocery store, would you be able to walk to the grocery store if you had to, um, and also if you have pets, are they acceptable, do they take pets um, at, at the community that you're looking to live in, um, and also public transportation, which Sandy did touch base on um, in the town here. And the next one is your social supports. You know, if you if you do decide to make a move and you you want to know that you're still going to have some form of social support uh, if you can't drive anymore. The next place, do they have better public transportation systems? Uh, will you be closer or further away from family or friends? How are you going to stay connected to your peers? Go and visit the senior center. That would be my right? <laughs> Um, yeah. The key is really avoiding isolation, and I think that's been proven. Isolation leads quite often to depression, and that is very prevalent among older adults um, mm -hmm. here and everywhere. Yeah. Um, what kind of support will you have? It's so important to remain as engaged as possible for as long as possible. That's what keeps us going. We're social animals. Right. Um, so avoiding isolation is a big deal. Um, and then we want to make sure you get on the bus. <laughs> okay. And then um, also feeling safe where you are and safe alone. Um, some of us, maybe not most of us, but at some point in our lives will live alone. Um, and so you want to make sure that your surroundings, you feel safe when you come home in the evening. Um, or if you're, and if you fall, um, that you have a personal call button, um, which is it's called Lifeline, I believe. Has anybody Life Alert? Yeah. Life Alert. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also good lighting inside and outside of your home um, is always helpful when you're aging. So we kind of went through it. Those are some of the considerations. So hopefully, as you're sitting there, your minds are starting to go, mm, I didn't think about that yet. Oh, I really need to sit down with this person or that person. Oh, you know what? Uh, I haven't had that yet. I've been thinking about it. Or I did that a while ago. So there are some steps that you can take today. Number one on the list is have that family discussion. The holidays are coming up, right? So you're going to be celebrating. Everybody will be in a good mood, mostly. Depends on your family. Depends on the family. And those discussions there can be very difficult to have. Uh, we tend to be private people. We don't like to share that much, especially if we're going to share things on the possibility that we're not going to be quite up to the person that we have been so far. We start suffering a decline. What are your wishes? Make sure somebody knows what they are. If they don't know that you wanted to stay in your house and have home care, they're going to say, oh, you know what? This is the better option. There's no way they can stay at home. We're moving them out of there, and you end up in a home. So you need to make those wishes known to your closest people, um, deciding on your expectations. Some of the things that we talked about. I want to live in a community where I can walk to a market, where I can get to the post office, where I can sit down and have a cup of coffee and read a book. Um, are those the things that are important to you? I want to live on a beach and have somebody bring me a nice cool mm -hmm. beverage every once in a while. Um, researching those housing options, the ones that we talked about, you know. If it were to happen, that you became incapacitated and you could not go home for a little while and had to go to a rehabilitation center, what are the ones that are close by? You end up in the hospital and I say, okay, now we got to send you for rehab. And you're like, but I just want to go home. Uh-uh. No, you're not ready to go home. You need to do some time in rehab first. Well, wouldn't it be nice if you already knew what those options close to you were? that you could say, you know what, if I'm going, this is the one I want to go to. And know what those expectations are. So kind of think about that before you have to be there. Um, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. 
Okay. Um, and then also, you want to work with a financial advisor um, <coughs> just to know, A, how much um, home care would cost if you need to have it in your home, whether it's 24 hours a day or one hour a day, two hours a day, um, as well as um, having all your um, dur durable power of attorney in, in order, um, already sealed and certified, um, and making sure that um, everybody around you, especially the healthcare professionals, know that you have those documents and that they would need copies of those documents. Be prepared for all scenarios, <laughs> or at least most of them. Most of them. Mm -hmm. You can't be prepared prepared for everything. Mm -hmm. And we do have a tool over here that um, a list of the documents that you should have at your fingertips and put in a safe place. Uh, so there are some tools here to help you with that. One, somebody did ask, okay, should I really stay here or should I think about moving? And there is a cost calculator um, piece over here on if you're considering a move. Uh, one of the other we things. We also have um, the disaster checklist um, you were talking about if something happens. So that's always good to have. Mm -hmm. And then there is a copy of the advanced directives over there. Advanced directives is. I'm going to call it, and they will correct me in a, in a later session, I'm sure, but it's almost like a mini will. It kind of gets yes. just the most basic of your wishes down. Um, who, what goes to whom, not in specifics, just in incredibly general terms. So that's a very general tool just to have something in place so that at least there's something on record of what your wishes may be. Um, so that's available to you. If you have nothing else, if you haven't done that yet, that's at least the first thing you ought to do. Um, and then for those of you who maybe already have put a lot of these things into place already, good for you. When was the last time you reviewed that information? Right? You know, if it's been more than three years, you might want to drag that out and look at it again. Things change. Right? Things change all the time. What's true for you today and three years from now could have changed completely. Maybe you cut someone off. Or maybe they're back in your good graces. So that's something that you might want to talk about too. Um, so that's essentially our overview. Those are some of the things to start thinking about and hopefully your brains don't hurt too much right now. Um, but we're going to bring in some people who have more knowledge and expertise a little bit more um, to the point than what we're giving you right now. So the first one coming up is um, housing and environment, where we're talking about where you currently live and what you can do to make sure that the place that you're living in now ages along with you as best as possible. So we have Jennifer Baker. She is a certified aging in place specialist. She's coming to us from the New England um, Assistive Technologies at Oak Hill, which is located in Hartford, um, who will talk about some of the home modifications that she specializes in and some of the considerations to take into place um, in a home safety checklist, how to go through your home as it is now and, and spot some of those things that could be problematic for you if you're not careful. <coughs> She will be coming in with a rail lock. Does anyone here know a rail? Yes. So a rail is a, one of our fabulous volunteers as well. She has volunteered for us for very many years doing the AARP tax assistance program. She's running that program for us now. But more than that, she and her husband have this most beautiful piece of property here in Granby. And they knew that the home that they were currently in wasn't going to really age with them as they thought that it needed to. And they always thought they were going to build another home on that property anyway. And they did. But when they were building that home, they took special care and really considering all those things that may happen down the road. So she came in at one point and asked to borrow a wheelchair because she, as they were building that house, she wanted to make sure that that would fit through all the doorways. Uh, a barrier-free bathroom they needed to get and to use the shower, it will roll right in there if they needed to. They would be able to access, if they were going to end up putting a hospital bed in at 
one point, that it would get in there and be in the place that they wanted it so they could still overlook the beautiful property that they have. Put a lot of thought into that. So we thought we'd invite her in just to kind of walk through some of the considerations that they had when they were building that home because they're, they're going to stay. That's the place they're staying. And then session, session two will be the financial implications. Um, attorney George Bigford, he's an elder law attorney um, out of East Granby, and I'm not sure if anybody, do most of you know who he is? Okay, he'll be coming in to do a presentation. Um, he'll be talking about wills and living wills, durable power of attorney, um, healthcare proxy, financial power of attorneys, um, and also the advanced healthcare directives. Um, and he'll go into more detail of the difference between all of those um, documents. And then the next session, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens when you have a medical issue. And for that one, we have Michelle Sukha. She is our social worker over at Meadowbrook of Granby. She'll be able to talk a little bit more about what the most common reasons for admissions to their facility are. And it's not, you know, always because they're in for skilled care. It might be in, they do also have the rehabilitation, so it might be going in for temporary reasons to do some rehabilitation before you get sent back home. What are those hurdles to going home? You say, no, I'm going to go home and I'm going to have home care. Well, that's great. You don't have a bathroom on the same floor as where you sleep. How are you going to get back and forth to the bathroom, right? Who's going to cook for you? Even if you can move around a little bit, is the kitchen on that same floor, right? So there's some considerations to that, too. Um, you know what? Um, and then she'll talk about how to stay healthy to ho hopefully avoid getting placed in the first place. What are some of the things that you can do now to kind of keep yourself healthy? I think you all know that we ought to be exercising in some manner or another. And it doesn't have to be out jogging miles every day. Everybody can exercise, um, and there's different ways to do that. And then she really has a good handle on what some of those related costs would be. When Medicare kicks in, when Medicaid kicks in, how many assets do you have before you can get onto certain programs? So she has a little bit better handle on some of that information as well. So here they are. These are the three upcoming sessions with the dates, um, housing and environment the financial considerations, and the medical issues. So if you start thinking about a lot of these things, um, hopefully what you're going to end up with is having a little bit of peace of mind down the road, knowing that you've done some homework, that you know that should something happen, if you become incapacitated in some way or another, what your wishes are and how to go about paying for them, how to stay happy, where you're going to be, and to be comfortable where you are. So that's what we have for you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you go right ahead. Do you have any privileges in the cemetery or no? Uh, privileges in the cemetery? Well, maybe. Maybe. Well, right. So, for that, I would call it um, the Granby the Cemetery. Yeah, they do have a, a group, and you have to contact them. And that is one of those things that you might want to consider, too, is those prepaid funeral expenses. That, that's a big one to, you know, work on that as well. But yeah, certainly the Randy Cemetery, they do have an association. We can look that as information up for you online. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. if that's where you want I to think land. that's the only place we may have some privileges in You may. <laughs> exactly. That's one way to stay in Randy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm going straight up. Good for you. Why are you staying here? The soul is going. <laughs> So as we said earlier, we do have some delicious cookies. Um, help yourself. Uh, the materials are up here. Take one or all, whatever you would like. Um, and if you don't have it come through that newsletter, I would encourage you to do that again. Um, and then if you have any questions, go ahead and ask, and like I said, we'll do our best to either
either answer or get the answer. Are the next ones longer? I thought it said one to three. Right. So you know what? Like we said, we're not exactly experts in everything, but I'm imagining the next ones are they, they probably go a little bit longer depending upon what kind of questions you have. Oh, so you just so put that. We're, so we yeah. could we're okay. allowing for plenty of questions. Okay. In that session. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, it's a good job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I do hope you that you'll be interested and you'll come back for the, the other sessions. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Good. Good.